A spear is a pole weapon consisting of a shaft, usually of wood, with a pointed head. The head may be simply the sharpened end of the shaft itself, as is the case with fire-hardened spears, or it may be made of a more durable material fastened to the shaft, such as flint, obsidian, iron, steel, or bronze. The most common design for hunting or combat spears since ancient times has incorporated a metal spearhead shaped like a triangle, lozenge, or leaf. The heads of fishing spears usually feature barbs or serrated edges. The word spear comes from the Old English spira, from the Proto-Germanic speri, from a Proto-Indo-European root asterisk spur spear, pole. Spears can be divided into two broad categories, those designed for thrusting in melee combat and those designed for throwing, usually referred to as javelins. The spear has been used throughout human history both as a hunting and fishing tool and as a weapon. Along with the axe, knife, and club, it is one of the earliest and most important tools developed by early humans. As a weapon, it may be wielded with either one hand or two. It was used in virtually every conflict up until the modern era, where even then it continues on in the form of the bayonet, and is probably the most commonly used weapon in history. Origins Spear manufacture and use is not confined to humans. It is also practiced by the Western chimpanzee. Chimpanzees near Kadaugu, Senegal have been observed to create spears by breaking straight limbs off trees, stripping them of their bark and side branches, and sharpening one end with their teeth. They then used the weapons to hunt Galagos sleeping in hollows. Prehistory Archaeological evidence found in present-day Germany documents that wooden spears have been used for hunting since at least 400,000 years ago and a 2012 study suggests that Homo heidelbergensis may have developed the technology about 500,000 years ago. Wood does not preserve well, however, and Craig Stanford, a primatologist and professor of anthropology at the University of Southern California, has suggested that the discovery of spear use by chimpanzees probably means that early humans used wooden spears as well, perhaps, 5 million years ago. Neanderthals were constructing stone spearheads from as early as 300,000 BP and by 250,000 years ago, wooden spears were made with fire-hardened points. From circa 200,000 BC onwards, Middle Paleolithic humans began to make complex stone blades with flaked edges which were used as spearheads. These stone heads could be fixed to the spear shaft by gum or resin or by bindings made of animal sinew, leather strips, or vegetable matter. During this period, a clear difference remained between spears designed to be thrown and those designed to be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. By the Magdalenian period, c. 15,000 to 9,500 BC, spear throwers similar to the later Otlatl were in use. Military Ancient History Africa Europe Greeks The spear is the main weapon of the warriors of Homer's Iliad. The use of both a single thrusting spear and two throwing spears are mentioned. It has been suggested that two styles of combat are being described, an early style, with thrusting spears, dating to the Mycenaean period in which the Iliad is set, and, anachronistically, a later style, with throwing spears, from Homer's own archaic period. In the 7th century BC, the Greeks evolved a new close-order infantry formation, the phalanx. The key to this formation was the hoplite, who was equipped with a large, circular, bronze-faced shield, hoplon, and a 7 9 feet, 2.12.7 m, spear with an iron head and bronze butt spike, doru. The hoplite phalanx dominated warfare among the Greek city-states from the 7th into the 4th century BC. The 4th century saw major changes. One was the greater use of peltasts light infantry armed with spear and javelins. The other was the development of the sarasa, a two-handed pike 18 feet, 5.5 m, in length, by the Macedonians under Philip of Macedon and Alexander the Great. The pike phalanx, supported by peltasts and cavalry, became the dominant mode of warfare among the Greeks from the late 4th century onward until Greek military systems were supplanted by the Roman legions. Romans in the Primarian Roman armies, the first two lines of battle, the Hastati and Principes, often fought with a sword called a gladius and pila, 
heavy javelins that were specifically designed to be thrown at an enemy to pierce and foul a target's shield. Originally the principes were armed with a short spear called a asta, but these gradually fell out of use, eventually being replaced by the gladius. The third line, the triarii, continued to use the asta. From the late 2nd century BC, all legionaries were equipped with the pilum. The pilum continued to be the standard legionary spear until the end of the 2nd century AD. Auxilia, however, were equipped with a simple asta and, perhaps, throwing spears. During the 3rd century AD, although the pilum continued to be used, legionaries usually were equipped with other forms of throwing and thrusting spear, similar to auxilia of the previous century. By the 4th century, the pilum had effectively disappeared from common use. In the late period of the Roman Empire, the spear became more often used because of its anti-cavalry capacities as the barbarian invasions were often conducted by people with a developed culture of cavalry in warfare. Post-Classical History Muslim World Muslim warriors used a spear that was called an Azizaya. Berbers pronounced it Zaya, but the English term, derived from the Old French via Berber, is Asagai. It is a pole weapon used for throwing or hurling, usually a light spear or javelin made of hardwood and pointed with a forged iron tip. The Azizaya played an important role during the Islamic conquest as well as during later periods, well into the 20th century. A longer pole Azizaya was being used as a hunting weapon from horseback. The Azizaya was widely used. It existed in various forms in areas stretching from southern Africa to the Indian subcontinent although these places already had their own variants of the spear. This javelin was the weapon of choice during the Fulani Jihad as well as during the Mahdiist War in Sudan. It is still being used by Sikh Nuhang in the Punjab as well as certain wandering Sufi ascetics, Dervishes. Europe After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the spear and shield continued to be used by nearly all Western European cultures. Since a medieval spear required only a small amount of steel along the sharpened edges, most of the spear tip was wrought iron, it was an economical weapon. Quick to manufacture, and needing less smithing skill than a sword, it remained the main weapon of the common soldier. The Vikings, for instance, although often portrayed with axe or sword in hand, were armed mostly with spears, as were their Anglo-Saxon, Irish, or continental contemporaries. Infantry. Broadly speaking, spears were either designed to be used in melee, or to be thrown. Within this simple classification, there was a remarkable range of types. For example, M. J. Swanton identified 30 different spearhead categories and subcategories in early Saxon England. Most medieval spearheads were generally leaf shaped. Notable types of early medieval spears include the Angon a throwing spear with a long head similar to the Roman pilum, used by the Franks and Anglo-Saxons and the winged, or lugged, spear, which had two prominent wings at the base of the spearhead, either to prevent the spear penetrating too far into an enemy or to aid in spear fencing. Originally a Frankish weapon, the winged spear also was popular with the Vikings. It would become the ancestor of later medieval pole arms, such as the partisan and spitum. The thrusting spear also has the advantage of reach, being considerably longer than other weapon types. Exact spear lengths are hard to deduce as few spear shafts survive archaeologically but 6-8 feet, 1.82.4 m, would seem to have been the norm. Some nations were noted for their long spears, including the Scots and the Flemish. Spears usually were used in tightly ordered formations, such as the shield wall or the skiltron. To resist cavalry, Spear shafts could be planted against the ground. William Wallace drew up his Schildrons in a circle at the Battle of Falkirk in 1298 to deter charging cavalry, it was a widespread tactic sometimes known as the crown formation. Throwing spears became rarer as the Middle Ages drew on, but survived in the hands of specialists such as the Catalan Almagavers. They were commonly used in Ireland until the end of the 16th century. Spears began to lose fashion among the infantry during the 14th century, being replaced by pole weapons that combined the thrusting properties of the spear with the cutting properties of the axe, such as the halberd. Where spears were retained they grew in length, 
eventually evolving into pikes, which would be a dominant infantry weapon in the 16th and 17th centuries. Cavalry Cavalry spears were originally the same as infantry spears and were often used with two hands or held with one hand overhead. In the 11th century, after the adoption of stirrups and a high cantled saddle, the spear became a decidedly more powerful weapon. A mounted knight would secure the lance by holding it with one hand and tucking it under the armpit, the couched lance technique, this allowed all the momentum of the horse and knight to be focused on the weapon's tip, whilst still retaining accuracy and control. This use of the spear spurred the development of the lance as a distinct weapon that was perfected in the medieval sport of justing. In the 14th century, tactical developments meant that knights and men-at-arms often fought on foot. This led to the practice of shortening the lance to about 5 feet, 1.5 m, dot, to make it more manageable. As dismounting became commonplace, specialist pole weapons such as the polax were adopted by knights and this practice ceased. Asia. China. Spears were used first as hunting weapons amongst the ancient Chinese. They became popular as infantry weapons during the Warring States and Qin era, when spearmen were used as especially highly disciplined soldiers in organized group attacks. When used in formation fighting, spearmen would line up their large rectangular or circular shields in a shield wall manner. The Qin also employed long spears, more akin to a pike in formations similar to Swiss pikemen in order to ward off cavalry. The Han Empire would use similar tactics as its Qin predecessors. Halberts, pole arms, and dagger axes were also common weapons during this time. Spears were also common weaponry for warring states, Qin, and Han-era cavalry units. During these eras, the spear would develop into a longer lance-like weapon used for cavalry charges. There are many words in Chinese that would be classified as a spear in English. The Mao is the predecessor of the Qiang. The first bronze Mao appeared in the Shang dynasty. This weapon was less prominent on the battlefield than the Ji, dagger axe. In some archaeological examples two tiny holes or ears can be found in the blade of the spearhead near the socket, these holes were presumably used to attach tassels, much like modern-day Wuxia spears. In the early Shang, the Mao appeared to have a relatively short shaft as well as a relatively narrow shaft as opposed to Mao in the later Shang and Western Zhou period. Some Mao from this era are heavily decorated as is evidenced by a Warring States period Mao from the Bia Shu area. In the Han dynasty the Mao and the Ji, Ji can be loosely defined as a halberd, rose to prominence in the military. Interesting to note is that the amount of iron Mao heads found exceeds the number of bronze heads. By the end of the Han dynasty, Eastern Han, the process of replacement of the Iron Mao had been completed and the Bronze Mao had been rendered completely obsolete. After the Han dynasty toward the Sui and Tang dynasties the Mao used by cavalry were fitted with much longer shafts, as is mentioned above. During this era, the use of the Shuo, was widespread among the footmen. The Shuo can be likened to a pike or simply a long spear. After the Tang dynasty, the popularity of the Mao declined and was replaced by the Qiang. The Tang dynasty divided the Qiang in four categories. Roughly translated the four categories are, Qi, a kind of wood, spears, wooden spears, Bai Gan, a kind of wood, spears and Putou Qiang. The Qiang that were produced in the Song and Ming dynasties consisted of four major parts, spearhead, shaft, and spike, and tassel. The types of Qiang that exist are many. Among the types there are cavalry Qiang that were the length of one Zhang, 11 feet and 9 inches or 3.58 m, lit flower spears, Xiao Hua Qiang, that are the length of one person and their arm extended above his head, double hooked spears, single hooked spears, ringed spears, and many more. There is some confusion as to how to distinguish the Qiang from the Mao, as they are obviously very similar. Some people say that a Mao is longer than a Qiang, others say that the main difference is between the stiffness of the shaft, where the Qiang would be flexible and the Mao would be stiff. Scholars seem to lean toward the latter explanation more than the former. Because of the difference in the construction of the Mao and the Qiang, the usage is also different, though there is no definitive answer as to what exactly the differences are between the Mao and the Qiang. India
South Asian spears were used both in missile and non-missile form, both by cavalry and foot soldiers. Mounted spear fighting was practiced using with a 10-foot, ball-tipped wooden lance called a bothity, the end of which was covered in dye so that hits may be confirmed. Spears were constructed from a variety of materials such as the sang made completely of steel, and the balam which had a bamboo shaft. The Rajputs wielded a type of spear for infantrymen which had a club integrated into the spearhead, and a pointed butt end. Other spears had forked blades, several spear points, and numerous other innovations. One particular spear unique to India was the Vita or corded lance. Used by the Maratha army, it had a rope connecting the spear with the user's wrist, allowing the weapon to be thrown and pulled back. The Vel is a type of spear or lance, originated in southern India primarily used by Tamils. Japan The Hoko spear was used in ancient Japan sometime between the Yayoi period and the Heian period, but it became unpopular as early samurai often acted as horseback archers. Medieval Japan employed spears again for infantrymen to use, but it was not until the 11th century in that samurai began to prefer spears over bows. Several pole arms were used in the Japanese theaters, the naginata was a glaive-like weapon with a long, curved blade popularly among the samurai and the Buddhist warrior monks, often used against cavalry, the yari was a longer polearm, with a straight-bladed spearhead, which became the weapon of choice of both the samurai and the ashiguru, footmen, during the Warring States era, the horseback samurai used shorter yari for his single-armed combat, on the other hand, ashiguru infantries used long yari, similar with European pike, for their massed combat formation. Korea Philippines Filipino spears, sabat, were used as both a weapon and a tool throughout the Philippines. It also called Bangka, after Bangkor Revolt, Sumbling or Palupad in the islands of Visayas and Mindanao. Sabat are typically made from rattan, either with a sharpened tip or a head made from metal. These heads may either be single-edged, double-edged, or barbed. Styles vary according to function and origin. For example, a sabat designed for fishing may not be the same as those used for hunting. The spear was used as the primary weapon in expeditions and battles against neighboring island kingdoms and it became famous during the 1521 Battle of Mactan, where the chieftain Lapu Lapu of Cebu fought against Spanish forces led by Ferdinand Magellan who was subsequently killed. Vietnam North America Mesoamerica as advanced metallurgy was largely unknown in pre-Columbian America outside of western Mexico and South America, most weapons in Mesoamerica were made of wood or obsidian. This didn't mean that they were less lethal, as obsidian may be sharpened to become many times sharper than steel. Mesoamerican spears varied greatly in shape and size. While the Aztecs preferred the sword-like Makuawitl for fighting, the advantage of a far-reaching thrusting weapon was recognized and a large portion of the army would carry the tepas tepilai into battle. The tepas tepilai was a pole arm, and to judge from depictions in various Aztec codices, it was roughly the height of a man, with a broad wooden head about twice the length of the user's palm or shorter, edged with razor-sharp obsidian blades which were deeply set in grooves carved into the head, and cemented in place with bitumen or plant resin as an adhesive. The tepas tepilai was able both to thrust and slash effectively. Throwing spears also were used extensively in Mesoamerican warfare, usually with the help of an otlatl. Throwing spears were typically shorter and more streamlined than the tepas tepilai, and some had obsidian edges for greater penetration. Native American Typically, most spears made by Native Americans were created with materials surrounded by their communities. Usually, the shaft of the spears were made with a wooden stick while the head of the spear was fashioned from arrowheads pieces of metal such as copper, or a bone that had been sharpened. Spears were a preferred weapon by many since it was inexpensive to create, could more easily be taught to others, and could be made quickly and in large quantities. Native Americans used the buffalo pound method to kill buffalo, which required a hunter to dress as a buffalo and lure one into a ravine where other hunters were hiding. Once the buffalo appeared, the other hunters would kill him with spears. A variation of this technique, called the buffalo jump was when a runner would lead the animals towards a cliff. 
As the buffalo got close to the cliff, other members of the tribe would jump out from behind rocks or trees and scare the buffalo over the cliff. Other hunters would be waiting at the bottom of the cliff to spear the animal to death. Modern History Europe The development of both the long, two-handed pike and gunpowder in Renaissance Europe saw an ever-increasing focus on integrated infantry tactics. Those infantry not armed with these weapons carried variations on the pole arm, including the halberd and the bill. Ultimately, the spear proper was rendered obsolete on the battlefield. Its last flowering was the half-pike or spontoon, a shortened version of the pike carried by officers and NCOs. While originally a weapon, this came to be seen more as a badge of office, or leading staff by which troops were directed. The half-pike, sometimes known as a boarding pike, was also used as a weapon on board ships until the 19th century. At the start of the Renaissance, Cavalry remained predominantly lance-armed, gendarmes with the heavy knightly lance and lighter cavalry with a variety of lighter lances. By the 1540s, however, pistol-armed cavalry called writers were beginning to make their mark. Cavalry armed with pistols and other lighter firearms, along with a sword, had virtually replaced lance-armed cavalry in Western Europe by the beginning of the 17th century. Hunting one of the earliest forms of killing prey for humans, hunting game with a spear and spear fishing continues to this day as both a means of catching food and as a cultural activity. Some of the most common prey for early humans were megafauna such as mammoths which were hunted with various kinds of spear. One theory for the quaternary extinction event was that most of these animals were hunted to extinction by humans with spears. Even after the invention of other hunting weapons such as the bow the spear continued to be used either as a projectile weapon or used in the hand as was common in boar hunting. Types Bard spears, a bard spear has a crossbar beneath the blade, to prevent too deep a penetration of the spear into an animal. The bar may be forged as part of the spearhead or may be more loosely tied by means of loops below the blade. Bard spears are known from the Bronze Age, but the first historical record of their use in Europe is found in the writings of Xenophon in the 5th century BC. Examples also are shown in Roman art. In the Middle Ages, a winged or lugged war spear was developed, see above, but the later Middle Ages saw the development of specialized types, such as the boar spear and the bear spear. The boar spear could be used both on foot or horseback. Javelin Harpoon Trident Modern Revival Spear hunting fell out of favor in most of Europe in the 18th century, but continued in Germany, enjoying a revival in the 1930s. Spear hunting is still practiced in the USA. Animals taken are primarily wild boar and deer, although trophy animals such as cats and big game as large as a Cape buffalo are hunted with spears. Alligator are hunted in Florida with a type of harpoon. Gene Morris, a former Air Force colonel lobbied to legalize spear hunting Alabama in 1992. Through Morris' actions, Spear hunting was legalized in Alabama, though officials said they believed Morris was the only person to hunt with a spear in the state. Morris described himself as the greatest living spear hunter in the world. He opened a spear hunting museum in Sumerdale, Alabama. He died in 2011. In Myth and Legend Symbolism Like many weapons, a spear may also be a symbol of power. In the Chinese martial arts community, the Chinese spear, Qiang, is popularly known as the king of weapons. The Celts would symbolically destroy a dead warrior's spear either to prevent its use by another or as a sacrificial offering. In classical Greek mythology Zeus bolts of lightning may be interpreted as a symbolic spear. Some would carry that interpretation to the spear that frequently is associated with Athena interpreting her spear as a symbolic connection to some of Zeus' power beyond the Aegis once he rose to replacing other deities in the pantheon. Athena was depicted with a spear prior to that change in myths, however. Chiron's wedding gift to Peleus when he married the nymph Thetis in classical Greek mythology, was an ashen spear as the nature of ashwood with its straight grain made it an ideal choice of wood for a spear. The Romans and their early enemies would force prisoners to walk underneath a yoke of spears, which humiliated them. The yoke would consist of three spears, 
too upright with a third tide between them at a height which made the prisoners stoop. It has been surmised that this was because such a ritual involved the prisoners' warrior status being taken away. Alternatively, it has been suggested that the arrangement has a magical origin, a way to trap evil spirits. The word subjugate has its origins in this practice, from Latin sub equals under, jugum equals a yoke. In Norse mythology, the god Odin's spear, named Gungnir, was made by the sons of Ivaldi. It had the special property that it never missed its mark. During the war with the Vanir, Odin symbolically threw Gungnir into the Vanir host. This practice of symbolically casting a spear into the enemy ranks at the start of a fight was sometimes used in historic clashes, to seek Odin's support in the coming battle. In Wagner's opera Siegfried, the haft of Gungnir is said to be from the world tree Yggdrasil. Other spears of religious significance are the Holy Lance and the Luin of Seltchar, believed by some to have vast mystical powers. Sir James George Fraser in the Golden Bough noted the phallic nature of the spear and suggested that in the Arthurian legends the spear or lance functioned as a symbol of male fertility, paired with the grail, as a symbol of female fertility. The Hindu god Murugan, known as god of war is worshipped by Tamils in the form of the spear called Vel, which is the primary weapon of the god. The term spear is also used, in a somewhat archaic manner, to describe the male line of a family, as opposed to the distaff or female line. Legends Amenonuhoko, Spear of Izanagi and Izanami, Creator Gods in Japanese Mythology. Gi Bulk, Spear of Kukulane, Hero in Irish Mythology. Gi Bide and Gi Derg, Spears of Dire Muad Ua Duabitni which could inflict wounds that none can recover from. Green Dragon Crescent Blade, a Guandeo wielded by General Guan Yu in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Gungnir, Spear of Odin, a god in Norse mythology. Holy Lance, said to be the spear that pierced the side of Jesus. Octane Serpent Spear of Zhangfei, Yide, from the Three Kingdoms period in China. Spear of Fukei, the spear used by Gujian's arch-rival, King Fukei of Wu, in China. Spear of Lug, named after Lug, a god in Irish mythology. Trident a three-pronged fishing spear associated with a number of water deities, including the Etruscan Nathuns, Greek Poseidon, and Roman Neptune. Trishula, a three-pronged spear wielded by the Hindu deities Durga and Shiva. Vel, a fault-tend broad-tipped spear used by the Hindu deity Murugan. Rongomaniad, or simply Ron, the spear of King Arthur according to British tradition. Vasavi Shakti, spear of the Indian thunder god Indra and given to the hero Karna in the Marabharata. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.